No, no, no. Get out of the video. When the people feel like this is, this is comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I hate my Okay, so let's go take our notes. And yeah, my wife, I did allow my wife to be taken taken on stage and I did nothing. But she, we've been married for nearly 30 years, so. Wow. Okay. Did you get She's, well, um, now, my problem, no, she got back. She did it 16 <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's review really quick. So we got the World of the Roses. Which house is the Red Rose? The Lancaster. Lancaster. And which one is you? White? Your. Your. And, oh, what treaty did they make Henry V? He was going to be king and it's all over during the Hundred Years' War. Um, yeah, the Treaty of Troy. And Henry did not become king because what happened to Henry? Died. He was killed. Yeah, died really young. He just, no, he just died. I wonder if it was dysentery. Because he just took a long time for the dysentery. And so did Charles VI. And that led to the serious words, who would be the hero and the symbol of French nationalism? Oh, yeah. It seems like more of nationalism for every country during uh, World War One. They had all those pictures. But the, part of that was because they're all going to send troops to France. So, we got to hear, and yes, this I didn't even think about it, the saber-toothed tiger. <laughs> the saber-toothed tiger. Yeah, saber-toothed tiger. Yeah. Yeah. No, but like, what even are those things? Yeah. Those doesn't look like a beard at all. <laughs> it just looks like a beard. It really does, yeah. It's, 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 Is it just me or is anyone else going to have, like, nightmares? So, in the Civil War, the Yorks are on the rise, the Lancasters are going down. So, I don't know why, I'm just go with that. Wait, what? what that is the code of you. You can, that is both Korean and Chinese there. So, good luck with that. What is that supposed to say? Nothing. I was playing with buttons and I left. <laughs> if you go to Alt on the computer screen and do numbers, you can get arrows up and down. And then sometimes if you do it and like go really fast, that comes up. <laughs> and I don't even know why, but you I have, You could have done it on any other presentation, but you did it on War of the Roses. Why? On War of the Roses? Just War Chinese. <laughs> That's small. So, right here at the Battle of Towton was a huge victory for Yorkist forces over Henry VI. Well, actually, um, over the Lancasters. A massive victory. And therefore, Edward is going to look like he will be the next king. And that's Edward right there. Henry VI is removed. Partially imprisoned. Partially imprisoned. That is a scene from the battle. And I love this because lots of lambos and people running. I didn't, I tried to expand it, but I got too big with it, but I still wanted the picture, so I left it up. And and then the Lancasters came back. Warwick, who was a leading member of the House of Lancaster, defeated Edward's army in two different battles. And I kind of like this one. It's hard to see, but you get an idea of the chaos of these types of battles. But the battles today are much more bloody and dehumanizing, but just because of the nature of technology. But battles then just have the appearance of just absolute chaos. And therefore, in 1470, Henry's back. As unstable as he was, he's back. And so the Yorks attack again. You'll notice it's only one year. Yeah. So you know what's going to happen. Oh, oh wait a second. Yeah, this I'll do a short idea of how, how uh, the War of the Roses. It's a really complex thing. And you know, it's going to happen all over England. And going to have great effect because it will lead to eventually Henry the Eighth, which we'll get to next semester. Yes. Yeah, there was a, a battle. Uh, which I should add, beat a knight in river and armor. So at the battle, there's going to be two big victories. Otherwise, I put a parenthesis there. But in 1471, the Yorks attacked again, and two huge victories. The biggest one would be at Tewkesbury, where they devastated 
the king's forces and the Lancasters are put down again. And I love this picture with the knights in black armor. I really like that one. This one's from the uh, this one's from the 1500s, but I still I just think it's really cool. Because you see the the armor, the they really want to get this the light the fighting with Lancers. But let's be clear, these are the main forces, the longbow. I thought they're just shooting each other from one like five people. Yeah, they, they, they shook hands and then start shooting. And so Edward's back. So once again, Edward. And Henry VI would mysteriously die. I think we all understand what that means. Yes. He, Dysentery probably got up. He would see. He cut his throat. Uh, no, he got He was murdered, but. There was always claimed to be mysterious causes. And the Yorks are going to have to commit revenge on the Lancaster. They're going to take their estates, increase taxes, arrest a number of the leaders. You know, before it was, okay, a new king. Well, okay. We're all noblemen. We just want to steal from the peasants. So let's just go back to stealing from the peasants, a.k.a. the majority of people. But this time, they committed, they wanted revenge. Yes? Were the houses... Were they families of nobility or was it more of a region? It's all families of nobility. So it's spread all over. So you get various noblemen will, will, will be loyal to York, well, the Lancaster. And of course, since their, their loyalty is their oath, and they would never break their oath, meaning they switched all the time. So do most people have nothing to do with this? Uh, they would be recruited to the army or, or uh, le they would be made levies, forced into the army. But as the armies march through, they steal the food and take the stuff. So. Did it really matter who won the battle for the peasants? But it's going to matter in the long run just simply because it will lead to uh, Henry VI, Seventh Henry VIII. And that, that style of king would down the road have effect, but the net effect, no. It's just, which person's going to exploit us? Which just sound familiar. That seems to believe that it happens over and over and over and over and over again in history. And so with that, so they especially jack taxes on everybody to invade France again. The problem here was they also taxed some of their own loyalists or people who became loyal because he was going to take back France. It's 1471, so before the war, or the war, um, Unofficially over, they're going to we're going to go back and take Paris again, even though it's been basically not been fought since 1453. So they're going to go back to the Hundred Years' War and take France again. But then Edward died in 1483, and all he had was a young son to be king. So the Lancasters are in disarray, but this is where things get interesting. Edward V was 13, and he is young, son, a couple years younger than him, is going to need a regent, somebody who will reign for him until he's ready to rule. Edward's brother, Richard, would be the regent. Is it same repeat with uh, Richard? Different, re different Richard. Uh, Are we ready? Huh? Why was it Because because it goes, the, the throne goes to the first, the eldest son of the king. The younger brother helps the brother. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Edward, this Edward. Oh. Edward, the fourth brother, Richard, would be the regent. Oh, I would have spread it out. Well, I'd split. His younger brother would be the regent, but yeah. the older brother. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let the 11 year old decide things. <laughs> Good question. I'm glad you said that. Richard the third would be the, re the regent. Richard of Gloucester. And there is Richard right there. There's about 100 pictures of him putting this ring on, the royal ring. Lots of that. Why? Oh, these are the two sons. This is Edward and his brother. And by the way, this will become one of Shakespeare's greatest plays, Richard III. Because Richard decides, you know, I would really, really, really like to be king. So what's going to happen? Edward and his younger brother Richard are going to be put in the jail. And so 
their uncle, the regent, put the king and it's the Prince of York in jail. Hmm? Well, he's actually someone putting on the royal ring. But it does look like he can act. I mean, yes. just look at his face. That's the face that commits. It's like wrong. Every you picture of Richard III looks like that. You see that? And then this oh, might shock you, you, but the two oh, brothers so mysteriously so died. To this day, we're not sure how they died. I'm sorry, who, who killed them? But they were killed. They were murdered, obviously, by Richard III's minions. I don't know if he did one of those, but somebody rid me of those two, and somebody said, okay, I'll do it. And then he or did he order it? Wait, yeah. the kids mysteriously died? Yeah, the, myster the kids no. mysteriously were killed. And this infuriated, okay, the Lancaster's already mad, but you can imagine how some of the Yorks are like, oh, wait a second. This is not what we want. If he's going to kill his own nephews, one of them's the king, what or who might be next? Or for that matter, think of the taxes you'll raise on us. And so a lot of them switched sides and the war began again. Who's next? We're coming to the Battle of Bosworth Field, 1485, one of the biggest battles of the War of the Roses. And this is one of those turning points on what direction it's going to go. What direction the monarchy is going to go. Henry Tudor was a Lancaster, and he led the Lancaster in forces. And Bosworth Field, oh, Ludward Bridge, that's the, the bridge. I can remember the name of the river. And where's... Bosworth, right here. New in the central England. And this, a battle that raged back and forth, but you notice one other thing. More and more, as much as they used longbows, there were more arquebuses. Remember those are primitive, primitive muskets? And more foot soldiers using halberds. And I'll show you, show you a halberd later on, but it's a pike on top. You can see that little book right there? That could be used for a couple different things. One thing, to pull your enemy closer, and don't think about when it hooks you, how that, how that feels. Or, yeah. I thought halberds had accents on them. They have a hook, bat, a hook, and an axe. See that little those right there? That's also an axe book. So you go like that. But cavalry. Hamstring the horses. I know horses die by the thousands in these battles, you horse lovers. And so with that, Richard was killed in this battle, and the Yorkist side would end forever. Now, Richard is going to be uh, infamous then for this brutal dictator or this brutal monster who killed his nephews took power, and he had severe scoliosis. You might know scoliosis. That's the curve of the spine. Very uh, curvature of the spine. And so if you ever see Richard III, he probably just had a little curve, but with Richard III, um, got a little bit of that. You know, just, it's, it's really calm. It's not that big of a deal. But Richard III, um, it's, no one knows how true it was, but when they did the play, they would have the actors kind of hunched over, kind of like this, kind of like a hunchback. And it became the big thing for like over actors to do Richard III. Yeah, you know. Because it ends with him about to die and begging for a horse. So he could ride away to freedom. You know, ride away from the battle. A horse, a horse. A kingdom for my horse. See, I should have been pulled up on stage. But there is Richard III dying in battle. That's another painting of him, and yes, he has a similar expression. Now yes, he's like putting out the rain. But, huh? Why did he think he was off No, what he's doing is it looks like there are like three rings on it. But for some reason, it looks like one's on his thumb. Go on his pinky. One on his pinky, one on his ring finger, but then look at the thumb on the ring here. They were doing some construction that was going to be a parking lot for a mall. And part of in Britain, when you do construction, you have to go through and sift through everything because you might find ruins. It's actually a really controversial thing because companies don't want to find ruins because therefore they can't, they're now selling construction. 
Would they rather just build and make money? Well, as they're constructing, they found a number of relics that looked like, because it was very near the Bosworth Field battlefield, it could be where somebody was hastily buried. And they found that. The bones reconstructed in Richard III and his holy yeah, really And that's pretty extreme. Yeah, it is, he had a curvature of the spine that went like that, so he must have been in... Because what that does is it twists your ribs, and so every breath must have hurt like I just want to know what his, what his armor would look like. But isn't that great they found that? So that was just God, that was five years ago? So that's Richard III, and we know what happened. But what came out of this? Henry VII in 1480. This year's 2022, isn't it? I never know what year. I've been here for so long. They, they don't let me leave. They just sit in this stupid room. He's been around you for like 3,000 years. He knows all this. So, this would begin the Tudor dynasty. The Lancasters, Henry Tudor, and the Tudor dynasty in England. And they would cement a relationship with the Lancasters by marrying Elizabeth of York. A royal marriage. There is a creepy looking Henry. Here's Henry after the battle. Having, uh, He's stepping on the body. No, he did not actually step on the body, but it's supposed to say the body conquest. And he married Elizabeth of York, which was a niece of Richard, thus cementing the relationship, and immediately started saying, okay, we're not going to arrest all the Yorks, but the ones that were most extreme, and big AKA ones around Richard, they're going to set up these secret courts that are going to be called Star Chamber. They're just secret courts, nothing to worry about. The idea would be they would not be tainted by what's going on around. So there would be basically the judges and jury would be the same. These are noblemen close to Henry, part of the Lancaster family, who would rule in secret on members of the York family for treason. And as we all know, secret courts are, can always be trusted and will never be abused. Correct? Are we all good with that? Yeah, I'm sure. So to this day, have you ever heard anything about like a secret court or something where rule, you know, like people are being punished or tried and they don't even know what's happening? Sometimes they'll call it the Star Chamber. It starts here. Now, the reason he did it is because he's worried to be tainted by the Civil War and didn't want to make a big show of it. But you can imagine what's going to happen. He and then his son are going to use this as a way to get rid of enemies and secrets go to this horrible court where they could not even see the judges. They'd be behind uh, um, basically these curtains, and they would ask questions and rule on them. Who's going to be his son? The one of the most famous English kings? And so, so for example, we're in, we have star chambers in the U.S. kind of. But a few of these are special topics talked a little bit about the secret courts that ruled on, let's say, the people in um, Guantanamo Bay, or for that matter, uh, decided whether or not to search without a warrant. Those are kind of starting. So, oh, it's the Byzantines. Wait, they're still here. We're, we're going to get back to Henry VIII, okay? The Holy Roman. Well, this is not the Holy Roman Empire. This is just, they still call themselves the Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire is up here. And this is the extent of what we call the Byzantine Empire now. Then remember what, um, eventually they're going to be reduced in size to just a few spots. This is 1360. By 1450, it's here. My fingers on the empire. But they still lasted. It's amazing how long the Roman Empire lasts. So if you think about it, that goes from Augustus to here. No, it's not quite the same empire, but that's what it is. It's their, they still call themselves the Roman Empire. So Byzantium, the Fourth Crusade. Remember the remember the Fourth Crusade, and that was Venice, and they. Well, the sun has come out. It's really warming up. The howler monkeys are back. They might agree. So, 
Remember the, at, from Venice, they destroyed the crusade, took everything back to Venice. And it went from being this incredibly wealthy place to when they finally reestablished the Byzantine, it was poor. I mean, literally, the town, the whole place was gone, just barely holding on. But they were holding on, partially because of their incredible walls and the remnants of the Arab world who lived here. They were bitterly divided after the Crusades, too. So they couldn't knock them out. So they were holding on. Genoa and Venice both decided to um, support Constantinople in different ways. Why? These two cities were getting involved in the lucrative trade that drummed up after the Crusades. The Crusade trade through the Arab world to China, specifically for silk and pepper. And then a new empire was formed, the Ottomans. By the way, that's Hagia Sophia before the Ottomans took over. The Ottoman Empire was started as a kingdom of this group that basically swept in from what now present-day Kazakhstan. By the way, does anyone know what's happening in Kazakhstan right now? Kazakhstan is right here, a massive country right here. There's uh, re um, revolts against the, um, the dictatorship there, and there's Nazi fighting in the street, and the army of Kazakhstan has just been ordered to shoot anyone on site, and they're mowing down, we don't know. We have no idea. And Russia, who is poor, but has a lot of weapons, has sent troops to help mow down civilians right now. No idea what's going to happen. Literally right now. I always want to say Kazakhstan, but it's Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. I don't ask why, I just do. So they swept into here, and actually, the the original uh this they're called this these Turkish tribes, they toyed with being uh, with, with Judaism, with Christianity, and with Islam. That's how Islam gave them the best deal. And they would become the protectors, they're the ones that fit the caliphate, and then they created their own empire right here. And so, who are they? And then the plague opened a way for the for Osman and what's going to be called the named after him, the Ottoman Empire, to sweep around and open up this area to invasion. Greece, what is now Bulgaria, not today it's Macedonia, Serbia, but all this area here to sweep around. Because the plague had weakened, especially weakened resistance of anybody, let's say, like the Austrians up here. That's Osman, and yes, that hat is awesome. And much like the Arab Empire, they're very tolerant to other religions. Very tolerant. So Christianity, Judaism, they're most certainly allowed to practice their faith. They just had to do one. Yeah, yeah, yeah pay more taxes. They're going to be much more tolerant than... For example, the Christians were, or the Byzantine. And they became, therefore, a direct threat to the Byzantine Empire. There'd be a number of battles right here where the Byzantines just barely held out. Partially because the, the Ottoman Empire had enemies in what is Persia, here, that sort of thing. This is the Ottoman Sultan, and these are its most that's supposed to be part of his harem. And then these are some of his most valuable soldiers. We'll talk a little bit more about what the harem is down the road. But what they would do is literally, I'm using the word recruit, but recruit's not quite right. But they would encourage Christian families to turn over their children, their male children, to become slaves. I guess that's recruitment. But then they would turn these slaves into incredibly elite soldiers called the Janissaries. So they had other soldiers for anywhere from knights to levies to horsemen. But their elite were these elaborately decorated Janissaries. Top hard fighters, determined fighters, and here they are with arquebuses. Because the Ottoman Empire was the first of these empires to really adopt gunpowder as well to make cannons more usable, I and mean, they really adopted it. Now, 
the Janissarians and these outfits are become, going to become a big deal in Europe in the 15th and 16th century. Does anybody know what's going to come out of these elaborate outfits? Sorry. Huh? Sorry. Sorry. Say it again? Sorry. That's a good guess, but no, that's actually a really good guess. Something more pedestrian, you know, something that um, for the average people. Uh, Maybe it's entertainment. Jesters. On the right track, yep. Clowns! And Early clowns, they copied copy like the Janissaries. <laughs> yeah, they copied their outfits for entertainment. That's where it comes from, the Janissaries. That is an actual clown picking up. They had much better film. I just wanted to show a clown very elaborately decorated, and that's what I found. But where did you find that picture? Mm -hmm. I can't remember. It's under a tree. Why the shoes? By the way, that's fine if you're entertained in front of a small group of people. No, you have to get used. But you notice the makeup. You ever, ever wonder why clowns are so creepy? When the audiences got bigger, they started to make the makeup bigger so you could see them way back in the audience. Because you know they're in they're in on the stage and the crowd is on there, so the clowns have all kinds of makeup so you can see you have a happy clown, the sad crowd, and all that. Which I guess from a distance just looks kind of creepy, but when they're really close, what do they look like? A terrifying murder. I agree. <laughs> so with that, well, in the 1400s, there was another crusade that we haven't got to yet. The infamous Bulgarian crusade. Where is Bulgaria? Right here, just south of Jefferson City in the Ozarks. Bulgaria. Here's a better video of Bulgaria, right here. And as the Ottomans moved in, the plague started to die down in the 15th century. The decision was by a lot of, a lot of empires, especially the Austrians and the Hungarians. They want to drive them back because they see themselves as very vulnerable. So what do they say? It's a crusade against the infidel because they're Muslims. So they'll stop the Ottomans. And so thousands of knights and also as a way to get rich. And the assumption was, oh, we can beat them. We did it before, like they forgot the crusades, which, yes, they did. So Western Europe sent the cream of the nobility to fight in Bulgaria. And the Battle of Nicop uh, Nic Nicopolis, it was a devastating defeat in the present day, it's just south of Sofia, present day Bulgaria, an absolute rout. And you can imagine the weak Byzantine Empire was watching this. As much as they feared the Crusaders, they wanted the Ottomans defeated because they could see the Ottomans, if they win, to turn on Constantinople. So Constantinople. What little they had tried to help the Crusaders. And so guess who wants revenge on Constantinople? Yeah. And that's going to lead almost immediately to one of the first of many more sieges of Constantinople. Eventually, there would be five in the next 30 years. The problem was, it's really hard to take a city like Constantinople. It is surrounded on three sides by water. It's got the most elaborate walls ever made. They do have a powerful navy, small but well-trained army. They can be resupply from the sea. But also, how do you feed a big army to besiege someplace like that? You need a massive infrastructure and estate. And also, what about disease? So. The last of the crusade, it's called the crusade, it's in Varna. Varna is that was a big battle in the Russo-Turkish War in 1872. Right there, Varna. The last battle of the crusaders were defeated. The court city deserves the damn, the damn you. The Varna's right there. It's also a big battle in the Crimean War. Weird of these things stick in my head. But, a new sultan took over at 19, Mehmed II. And Mehmed was determined to drive Constantinople off, to take that over. And 
Here's Memo when he's a little bit older. Here is, this is actually a Byzantine picture of him. Oh, or no, no, that's a Constantine, I'm sorry. That's Memo. So he would raise an army of 80,000 men, 10,000 of them were Janissaries. How do you feed 80,000 men? It's going to be this incredible, elaborate system of supply trains and wagons and foragers and navy. The Ottoman Empire was, uh, um, were masters of organizing this country. That's what makes them such an incredibly powerful enemy um, to anybody who would fight them for over 100 years. No one has seen it like this since Rome in Europe. The tiny little cons uh, uh, army of Constantine, there's Constantine, the last emperor of Rome, Constantine the 11th, that's him. He had 7,000 men. He will get another 5,000. They will put a call on for another crusade. Another 5,000 would come, a few from Genoa. But that's all they got. That's it. And that's just a little help. Venice would supply a few ships. And Genoa would give indirect support, but that was it. So, that's all they have. Constantine's brother was controlling this area of the Peloponnese River, Sparta was right here. And he vowed to get sent help, but he would be bottled up in an insulate house. That's all they have. And so the Ottomans are going to take this massive force, most of them recruited from here, cross the Dardanelles, and sweep in this way. And this, let me show you one more picture for the Belmar. Well, you can see it here. That's Constantinople. You see why it's so hard to take? So Monday we take Constantinople. Tuesday, we change the entire thinking of the world. Yeah. Good. I like that. We got a basic map. Have a good weekend, everybody. It's supposed to be really, really, really windy tomorrow, and then make it better. Snow is snow is supposed to start in 30 minutes. I can't believe it's going to snow. There's no snow around here. No, I'm looking at the radar, though, now. Well, maybe. There's snow in a couple of valleys. I don't know what I'm going to do about the heat. This is going to go well. Now I don't think it is. Okay. It says it's supposed to get up to 40, but it says only 20 today. I don't think it's going to make it. Yeah, that seems like so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, just look at it without me. Oh, thank you. Very fun. It's all your. Oh, you're back. How are you feeling? Yeah. Um, pretty, pretty much completely fine. One day. One day. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Can I? Can I, can I uh, yeah, but you can't. Uh, it's not it doesn't take the Wi-Fi. So send it to me. Okay. Just send it to me on email, okay? okay. And let's see, Brady's got to go. Molly's got to go. Daisy's got to go. The people suggested very good movies. I might. Football items. Brady, when if I get to you and I blame you? So I'm starting, you'll be the first one to go. Sound good? Yeah. Sorry about that yesterday. Very good. Oh, Carl, you, we got done. I mean, you timed it perfect. You did good. No, but they were just saying that. Oh, it's tough. That's my, I would, I would prefer that. Oh.
Oh, did that mess you up? I didn't yeah. use them all. I, I always have note cards that I present, and I think that... I did that last time, time, but I didn't do it this time. Yeah, yeah. no cards. I'm going to procrastinate. I'm going to look at them. Yeah. I looked at them more on this last one than I ever have. You can also... But even if you don't need to information on slides. Oh, I have... I struggle to put any information on my slides. Like, I, there's some slides where I was like, oh, I don't want to put anything. Oh, so you don't want to put a lot on there. You can start reading your slides and there's that way that they can look at it. I wanted to just put pictures on mine, but I don't. It's good to have like bullet points. Yeah, that's a few words. Yeah. No, I didn't look at it all the pictures. But you know when you write down your notes as in order, you've kind of already remembered it. You go through that process. It's, it's like when you study and you write down something before you study, it's going to be better. Yeah. Uh, the Nigeria. Give me a sec, Daisy. I'm getting printed. What well, I do is I just cut out my notes from my notebook and just take them through these papers and just like write them all the way down. So it takes like five minutes. I'll be confused by Mike. I don't know. Mike is a chill. He's very nice. I've like never talked to him. Now that I'm here, so Rachel went yesterday. Oh, and Rachel's got to go. Molly, where were you yesterday? We are all ready for you. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry.